You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. It's time to talk about the Green Bay Packers. This is your Packers Update, the Daily Cheese, brought to you by Packernet.com. The Daily Cheese is a collaboration with the Packernet Podcast, hosted by Ryan Schlipp, the Back Daddy, and I am your host, J.J. Leahy. The Green Bay Packers have tied with the Indianapolis Colts for the most first-team All-Pro selections at four apiece. David Bakhtiari, Corey Lindsley, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Rodgers all made first-team All-Pro. Notable exclusion, Jair Alexander was named to the second team along with Zadarius Smith. The writers at Pro Football Focus had this to say on the snub. Jair Alexander was absolutely deserving of a spot on the first team, and it's a distinction worth highlighting. He finished with the best PFF coverage grade among cornerbacks at 90.6 in 2020. He didn't have the interception numbers of some other players at his position, but he was also beaten significantly less often and surrendered minimal damage when he did lose. Alexander did not give up a catch longer than 32 yards all season long and allowed just 9.6 yards per catch five full yards fewer than Xavier Howard in Miami. Jalen Ramsey had similar yardage numbers, but Alexander had more pass breakups, 13 to 8, and allowed a lower passer rating when targeted than Ramsey did. Now, many people have been quick to point out that Jair Alexander was so good this year, he simply just wasn't being targeted, and as a result, didn't show up much on any stat sheets. And so, Jair suffers from success. Aaron Rodgers being named first team all pro carries some weight. The last time the MVP was a quarterback but wasn't named first-team All-Pro was in 1987 when John Elway won MVP and Joe Montana was named to the first team. Rodgers does seem like the clear runaway favorite for MVP. Most analysts and commentators have quarterback Josh Allen at number two and Patrick Mahomes at number three. Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre talked to each other on SiriusXM Radio on Friday, and I wish we had audio to play for you, but unfortunately all I have is a transcript. The two were talking about Rodgers potentially winning his third MVP, something Favre did. Favre said, you're playing great. I don't know if a quarterback has ever played as good as you're playing this year. I've got nothing but high praise. I know it won't matter unless you win the big one. There's a different feel this year from the outside looking in. It's a different team. And uh, not to get all mushy on you, but the two did end the segment by saying they loved each other. Which, come on, that's a little nice after all the years of an icy relationship between the two. The Packers have signed three players to reserve future contracts. That would be wide receiver Chris Blair, safety Innes Gaines, and linebacker Ray Wilborn. Gaines is an interesting guy. He actually first worked out for the Packers back in August. At the time, I wrote that although he's a little bit smaller than what Gudekunst and Petten tend to like, I expected him to get signed back then because he's extremely versatile. I actually think he's a very comparable player to Chandon Sullivan. Last year, at this time, the Packers signed two players to reserve future contracts. That would be wide receiver Reggie Begleton and fullback Elijah Wellman. Begleton did play one game with the Packers this year. That was week four against the Atlanta Falcons. Wellman was released during training camp to make room for fullback John Lovett, who was claimed off of waivers from the Kansas City Chiefs and did play many games for the Packers this year before being placed on season-ending IR. Okay, it's wildcard weekend. In the NFC, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing the Washington football team, the Los Angeles Rams are playing the Seattle Seahawks, and the Chicago Bears are traveling to New Orleans to play the Saints. Just going off of Vegas odds, the most likely opponent the Packers will face next week will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Here now to talk about the Buccaneers is McFarland High School outside linebackers coach and offensive line coach Brian Hahn. Coach, welcome back to the show. Dude, I love doing this. Thanks for having me, JJ. Hey, I'm uh, excited that uh, we have you in here today because even though the Packers are not playing this week, you and I wanted to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because most likely that is the team we're going to play, uh, barring some upsets in the wild card round. And a lot of fans are really curious about what the Buccaneers look like now because it has been a long time since that uh, week six uh, upset when we went down to Tampa and got our butts whipped. So. Can you talk a little bit about what went wrong last time we played the Bucks? Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, what Tampa Bay did defensively was just a work of art. 
they used really nice formations uh, defensively with their D-line and linebackers to really kind of dictate and tell the Packers what they could and couldn't do for their offensive line pass protection. And then once they were able to steer the Packers into a certain protection set, they had really smart ways and, and really nice blitz packages to go ahead and attack that. So, um, with the, and that's something the Buccaneers and Todd Bowles have done all season long. They're really, really good at it. What I'm expecting from the Packers now, especially with Bakhtiari being out, is a whole lot of different multiple types of protection sets, meaning sometimes there'll be a, a straight drop, sometimes there'll be play action, sometimes they can get to a, a max protection with a tight end or a running back in, and sometimes they'll just go straight man protection knowing that somebody's going to come free and Rodgers is going to get the ball out quick. So I have a feeling with these adjustments that Green Bay will make, it's going to be a different looking ball game offensively for Green Bay. Can you talk to me about what the current identity of the offense is uh, and defense are for Tampa right now because th they are playing very different football than they were back then. Absolutely are, um, especially offensively. And if there's one way to get to this offense, it's very, very easily spelled out. It's B-L-I-T-Z. you got to <laughs> bring pressure against Tom Brady, man. And we were just talking a little bit before we started recording. This is so exciting to see this Mike Pettin defense finally start to come to fruition. And it's doing so because of the recent play of these inside linebackers. They're really starting to understand their jobs, which allows the D line to play free, which allows you to play a little bit more what's called divorced coverage or coverage in the back. That's not super dependent on the guys up front. So I'm thinking you're going to get a lot more pressure on Brady. You're going to be able to stop the run a little bit more and you're going to make him just take some shots that he normally doesn't have to take in um in that week six game did the bucks right now have the ability to repeat what they did defensively to us last time i want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor factor factor makes delicious ready to eat meals and they get sent right to your door they have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from including keto calorie smart vegan and veggie and more and there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. For sure. If, if Green Bay isn't multiple with their offensive line sets, especially with Bakhtiari being out, you know, one of the nice kind of silver linings, and I know it's going to sound weird to say this to a Packer fan, but one of the nice silver linings about Bakhtiari being out is maybe now you're not so dependent on what's called manslide protection, where Bakhtiari would literally just lock down one side and everybody else on the offensive line would get help. Well, you can't do that very often, and that might actually play into the Packers' hands now because they're going to have to be multiple on the offensive line with their protection schemes in order to take care of some of these what are called sims and creeper pressures from Todd Bowles and the Buccaneers. So that might actually play into their hand a little bit. If they stay static or if they don't make those changes and don't become multiple on the O-line, this Tampa Bay defense is going to pick them apart again. We saw it when, we, when you had um, the Carolina Panthers game where the Panthers were able to just bring four, but they were able to dictate what the Packers were, would do and pick on who they perceive to be the weak link. Well, now you have two possible weak links in your pass protection scheme with Billy Turner playing replacement left tackle and Lucas Patrick taking his place at right guard. So if you don't have a way to change up those protection schemes, Tampa Bay can eat you alive. Coach, thank you for giving us your time here and talking about the Buccaneers. Uh, tell me, uh, give a little plug for what you're doing to later today with the Baltimore Ravens. All week to have so much fun with this. What I get to do is I get to live stream on YouTube live 
uh, the, the game. So I watch on one monitor, I watch the game, the Ravens Titans game. And then I have fans and, and, and just football fans come in and ask questions in this YouTube live setting. And I go through and I answer them live. So I get to watch the Ravens run GT read and I get to show people why that works for this defense and why it maybe doesn't work for this defense. I get to have so much fun. Uh, we did it for the Packers bears game last week and we had um, some great feedback from it. So I just, I, I get to have a great time. I'm so excited for it. This Ravens offense just blows my mind. If you're doing nothing and you want to just kind of hang out and watch a football game and tune it in and out between the game and some scheme stuff, please join us at Pack Daddy NFL. That's the YouTube channel we'll be streaming from. And we're just going to have fun, baby. Yeah, and I can vouch that uh, watching film with Coach is extremely fun, and uh, he does a good job of, of breaking stuff down and making it easier to understand. So uh, you definitely, if you have the uh, ability and the time to get in there and watch that, you definitely should. All right, Coach, thank you so much for joining the show today. Hey, I appreciate it, JJ. Hey, in case you didn't know, I do a weekly podcast over on the Packers Talk radio network. And it's a little bit different flavor than this one. It's a long form half hour podcast with my co-host Gil Martin, writer at Cheesehead TV and the SportsDaily.com. And every week we do a deep dive on the upcoming Packers matchups. We watch film both on the Packers and on their upcoming opponents, take a look at weaknesses and mismatches. And for example, if you had listened to it, you would have not been very surprised at the outcome of the Panthers game. We said it was a bad match for the Packers. The Panthers are a much better team than what their record indicated, and all of their games are very close. We gave you some reasons why the Panthers' defense was going to frustrate and stymie the Packers' offense and make it much more of a heartburn kind of game than what most people were expecting. On the flip side, we told you that the Titans and Packers were a very good matchup for each other, and we predicted a relatively comfortable win for the Packers. So if you're interested, that's called No Huddle Radio. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify or you can head over to PackersTalk.com and listen on the site there. And I tell you this every week, but you don't seem to listen. Please go sign up for our free weekly Packernet newsletter. It's excellent content. I'm very proud of it. You can sign up by going to PackDraft.com slash newsletter, or by going to the Packernet Podcast Facebook page and clicking the newsletter tab. Or you can message me on Twitter at JJ Leahy, L-A-H-E-Y. Send me your email address and I will sign you up for you. That does it for today. For more in-depth analysis and a look at Packers strategy, make sure you're subscribed to the Packernet Podcast, hosted by the Pack Daddy, Ryan Schlipp. Keep up on all the Green Bay Packers news by going to Packernet.com and follow the Packernet Podcast on Facebook. My name is JJ Leahy, and this has been The Daily Cheese, your Green Bay Packers news update. Support for this podcast comes from Overtime Media.